Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I want to talk about the question, what photo editing software should I use for my landscape photography? I want to show you four different softwares that you have as options coming up. Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the channel where I help you improve your landscape photography through infield and post-processing tutorials as well as gear reviews. So if you're into landscape photography at all, you want to learn and get better, subscribe to this channel. In this video though, I want to talk about what photo editing software should you use for your landscape photography? Well, in this day and age, you know, can you actually go wrong? I think that's the big question. You know, photo editing software is about 50% of the work. Once you finish your infield workflow, take the photo, then what do you do to bring it back and make it that much better? So once you do come back, therein lies the problem. Which photo editing software should I use for landscape photography? Which one one fits me best? What are the pros and cons of each one? I think this video is really helpful for everybody out there, not only beginners who are just getting into photo editing and looking at different softwares that they can use for landscape photography, but also people who have used photo editing software for a long time, maybe looking to switch, maybe to looking for something to add into their workflow for their post-processing. And I think that this video is really gonna help you decide which one to go for and why. So let's really jump into these four that we're gonna be going through. We're gonna be looking at Lightroom, Photoshop, Luminar, and On One Raw. So let's jump right into this, see the pros and cons of each one. First up, let's look at Lightroom. And obviously the number one thing that I think is a pro in Lightroom is their organization. Once you import your images into this catalog, it automatically goes through your computer and starts organizing your images out by date where you have them in your folders. And it's really easy to find your images that way and know, okay, well, I shot this on, I don't know, March 23rd. I pull this up of this year, March 23rd. All my images are there. Really easy to follow along and find those. Other features, just like if you hit the one key on your keyboard, that's gonna star this image out, set the rating to one, and it's just a really easy way to, hey, okay, th this is one of my favorite shots of the day. I'm gonna go through and start editing this one, and the workflow that that creates is just a really fast and easy one to use. So if I select that one, I can double click on it, zoom up, find a really good viewpoint of this, and start the editing process. Now, the editing process is very easy to use, but there's also a lot of features for you to use. And I think that comes as an advantage because it allows you to easily set up a workflow. And I always say with a photographic workflow in the digital darkroom of post-processing, once you have a significant way of following the same path, it's very easy for you to set up a consistent photo style and people see that image and they're like, hey, David Johnson took this photo. Hey, X photographer took this photo. So it's really easy to set up a workflow. Once you do get into the editing system, it's just very easy and basic to go through. I mean, you can create a great image just in the basic sliders, you know, increase the exposure, contrast, let's pull down highlights on this, pull shadows up, pull whites up a little bit, let's bump the clarity, let's bump the vibrance, and saturation automatically, boom, we have an image that we have to work with. Just with those few edits and going through those, we can look at the before and after and immediately see that we have a much better photograph going forward. If you never leave the basic tab, you have a good photo to work with automatically. Not only that, this is basically gonna have all of the edits that you could ever want for an image. I mean, it has things like remove chromatic aberration, you can mess with the hue, the saturation, the luminance, you can do the tone curve, the basic sliders we just went through, lens corrections, you know, it has all these things that you can use to make a professional photo. Not only that, it has photo merge capability like merge to an HDR image, has things like merge to panorama. If you take a pano sequence going all the way across, it's very easy to go through that process and say, hey, I'm going to merge this. Not only that, it's easy to use with Photoshop, which we're gonna be getting into in just 
a minute, but it is easy to use with that too. But this has all the editing options for you. If you want like to see way more options on this, how to edit your images using Lightroom, click or tap the card showing up on your screen right now that's gonna take you to a playlist for you to see everything basically that you can do in Lightroom. And then you can come back to this, watch the other three that we're gonna go through too. Some of the cons with Lightroom is that there's no real ability to create layers. So this is the image that you work with the entire time unless you move it over and work with Photoshop and Lightroom simultaneously and have those systems sync together. But there is no layers function on here for you to work with like masking, other things like that. That's not really how it's designed. It's designed to go into Photoshop and Lightroom and use those same interchangeably and use them together to create an image. Not only that, it is kind of annoying to have a monthly payment plan with Lightroom. You know, you can go to the Creative Cloud from Adobe website and look through these and say, okay, which plan is best for me based on my monthly payment? You know, the Lightroom plan, the photography plan where you get Lightroom and Photoshop for $9.99 a month with 20 gigs of storage on your cloud. Or you can do the photography plan with one terabyte of storage for $19.99 a month. Look, I get it. This is a very good system to use the Creative Cloud. I just hate paying monthly fees for things. I hate having something come out monthly. I'd rather just pay all up front and get that out of the way. When you add it up at the end, this is more expensive, the most expensive that we're gonna go through on this list because 12 months out of the year, you're paying 10 bucks a month. At the end, it's 120 bucks and change for the entire year. There are some cheaper options to use too. So the payment plan can get a little bit old. The bonus to that is that there are free updates within the Creative Cloud plan, so you don't have to pay for the updates when they come out. You just get those with your monthly payment. So, okay, what if you were using Photoshop too or by itself? If I was using Photoshop interchangeably, I'd just right click, go to edit in and edit in Adobe Photoshop and Photoshop is gonna open up for me. If I wasn't using Lightroom, one of the cons here with just using Photoshop is there's no great organizational feature that it does automatically for you. Now, obviously you can go in and organize your images in folders beforehand and then import those and edit those one by one. I just find that having something organizationally in a library catalog for me when I import all of my images is extremely helpful and it just makes the process go way faster whenever I am using post-processing. But one of the benefits of using Photoshop is it has every single edit available that you could ever imagine. So what do I mean by that? Well, you can look at the image that we were just working on in Lightroom. If I imported this straight into Photoshop, it would give me a camera raw import system where I could make the basic adjustments first and then import it into Photoshop. But I could do things like add an adjustment layer, come in, and if I know I wanted to make a curve adjustment layer to this, increase my highlights, decrease my shadows, that kind of looks bad. I don't want to do it that much, but pull this down maybe a little bit. Make a nice little S-curve here to give me a little bit more contrast and use something like that. I can come in and make a new layer. I can paint over this if I wanted to. Let's select out a color in this and just paint like a very basic, vague, foggy, atmospheric color to this. Look at the before and after on this layer looks just a nice subtle edit we can make there. You have layers options, you have masking options that you can do for this. Like let's say I wanted to create a mask on this that I just painted in. Let's say I wanted to make a really drastic, abrupt color change and make it really foggy and atmospheric. I'll just paint a lot more into that. And I got down here on this rock and said, well, I don't really know if I want it that much on the rock. I could come down here create a mask and I could go switch this over to black and then I can paint this out on the layer mask so that that doesn't show up anymore. 
There we go. Ability to make mask, ability to create layers and adjust those is really one of the benefits of Photoshop. Now, another huge benefit in Photoshop is that there are about a hundred ways to do every single edit. There are a hundred ways to make masks with keyboard shortcuts, with going up to the menu. There are a hundred ways to edit those masks. So it really is good for those who want a very specific organized workflow because you can basically create a workflow that uses what you're comfortable with when you get into these tools, finding the way that you like best and then using that into your post-processing workflow. However, that does lead to a con here because Photoshop is kind of getting this reputation with photographers who are just starting out or not really familiar with it or more comfortable with something like Lightroom that it's extremely overwhelming. There's so much you can do you don't really know where to start. If you want more videos on how you can edit your photos with Photoshop, click or tap on the screen with the card showing up right now of a playlist that you can go through and learn how you can edit your images using Photoshop. Let's get into some of the other softwares though real quick. Let's look at Luminar real quick. So this is Luminar for a really good organization feature for us to use. Now this is new within the past two years. It's a really great organizational uh, pattern you can use. I like how it kind of organizes it in vertical and landscape views. So they're, they're like stacked images. It's like a collage. It's, I like it a lot better to look at than Lightrooms, honestly. And so you can do a lot of the same features, like you can look at it, get a preview, double click on that to zoom in and out. I can hit the one star to set a one star rating. It's a lot of the same stuff as Lightroom and it organizes it in the same way. So I can go to all photos, I can look up you know, by date, year, all that stuff. It's a really good way to find your images that you wanna work on and then start editing those as well. So once you do want to start editing, you just go over here to edit and I'm going to be editing a JPEG image just to make this a little bit faster because one of the cons of Luminar is that with slower processing systems on your computer, laptop, desktop, whatever you're using, it does tend to lag if you're using a slower computer or a very old computer. A lot of the newer computers can handle it, but it's such a robust software system that that lag does come into play a little bit for some, I haven't had any issues with mine, honestly, but some have reported lag issues. That's one of the cons, but it's just very basic and fast and just straightforward edits like light. I can automatically just come in here and know I'm gonna decrease my highlights, increase my shadows some. I can go to like advanced options and I have options for whites and blacks uh, coming in here and making those adjustments. Just simple edits that you can make. It's very straightforward. The menus collapse, you know, and I think one of the big benefits to Luminar is that they think a little bit ahead of the curve, outside the box, give you a lot of different options for editing, like their artificial intelligence features that they have like AI Enhance, you know, AI Accent and AI Sky Enhancer are two that I use all the time. It's basically multiple adjustments that you're making at one time. So AI Accent, I'm lifting shadows, I'm decreasing highlights, and I'm also increasing the contrast as well. AI structure is just kind of the same thing. Artificial intelligence of creating contrast and clarity in my image. Just pull that up to like 10 or something. I have color options, you know, sats and vibrance. I really like these tools a lot. And honestly, this is the one I use more than any of the others. I do work with Luminar a lot. I'm keeping this very unbiased, telling you the pros and cons of each one. The cons is a lag of Luminar. There are other cons that I have problems with, like there's no pano merge, there's no real easy HDR merge unless you have Aurora HDR that they offer for download if you purchase it as well. So in those aspects, I like Lightroom better because I can easily pano merge and HDR merge my images. But if I'm just doing one image and working on that, I know I'm staying within this framework, I'm probably gonna be using Luminar over Lightroom to do that. Another pro is you do have layers up here. So I can automatically go up here, I can create a new layer, a new adjustment, 
adjustment layer and start working to edit in this layer now so I don't mess up what I've already done down here. Let's say I want to create something like a more mystical look. I can come down here, add something like mystical, like haziness effect to that. Let's say I wanna darken the sky a little bit more. I can come down to the professional layer down here. I can come to adjustable gradient and just kinda of like decrease the exposure in the sky if I have it set to top, increase the contrast, decrease the highlights, maybe warm it up a little bit more, create more of a warm glow. Automatically, you know, that's so much better. You can look at before and after and see what we did here. And it's just a way better image that we have now. We kept that glow of the foreground and darkened the sky a lot more to create a good effect. It's the cheapest of the four that we're going through in this video at $89 if you go through and look at the packages that they have right here. And it's just a really good way to quickly make edits, make professional edits, and start the process of creating a workflow for you. If you want more videos on how to use Luminar, click or tap the card showing up on your screen right now that's gonna take you to a playlist of different ways that you can use Luminar to create professional looks. Maybe see some of the other features that they have within the software too. Let's look at the last one on the list. This is On One Photo Raw, and this is their 2020 version. Again, I'm using a JPEG image just to speed up the editing process. And this is a little more expensive than Luminar is, but we can go through and like just go to their website. This is $99 for the download. I think it's 79 for the upgrade package if you're using an older version. But it has examples of all of their you know basic edits that you can make and apply to your image to make an overall edit and see how it looks with that. Uh, they have different things like creating panoramas. They do just start using artificial intelligence auto-tone features. Just has a lot of different features, like here's the pano that I just talked about. So it does have pano and HDR features, unlike Luminar does. I think Luminar needs to set their game up on that but these pano features are very good. If we look at the actual software itself, we can see a good layout. I honestly didn't really like the library features that it had. It was a little bit confusing of, of importing the images, which image that you wanted to work with. So that's kind of a con. It was a little bit clunky in that sense, but it does have very just like basic adjustments that you can use, you know, exposure, contrast, let's pull highlights down to darken that sky. Let's get our midtones up a little bit. Uh, you know, it just very basic edits that you can use going through here. Saturations, let's add more of that in there too. But it also does have uh, different layer options that you can use, like here's the layer I'm working with. I can add a new layer on top of that. Or if I didn't want to add a layer, I could go over here to like masking features. I could do different things with masking if I wanted to. Just come in and start adjusting a lot within On One Photo. So it does have very advanced edits that you can make aside from the basic adjustments that you can make running through these. I think On One is a really good option for anybody just starting out in their photo editing. So you can go, you know, one photo at a time. You know, what does each adjustment do to each image? How do I work with this? You know, and then you get into the more advanced edits of masking, refining the mask, doing things like that. I think if you're just getting started, I think Luminar and On One are really good to use because you can go from basic to advance very quickly in that sense. Again, a pro in this is it does have HDR and Pano automatically included in it, but it does have further features for you like details. I can add a lot more details and sharpening to this image lens corrections, and then lastly, transform options if I wanted to use those as well. This is just scratching the surface of On One. Honestly, it's the newest one that I've started using just from time to time periodically. It's the most unfamiliar one to me out of these four. I wanna be very honest about that but it does seem like a very good software that you can use when you're just starting out. Honestly, nowadays you can't go wrong with any 
photography, software, and post-processing. If you want to see more playlists that you can use to edit your images, click or tap the cards showing up on your screen right now of next steps that you can take with these playlists. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Can't wait to see you next time.